fall is in the air, which means it's my last opportunity to go out and collect my herbs. So today I'm going to show you what I do to preserve my medicinal herbs. Hey, Provider Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen. And my garden this year has been a little bit weird. Like, I've had crop failures that I've never had before. But the funny thing is, is that my culinary and medicinal herbs, they're all thriving. You gotta love those weeds. So today, in this video, I want to show you what I do to preserve them and to use them in my home. Now, my part in this is going to be very minimal because I know very little about this. <laughs> I know about power stations and spreadsheets and all that stuff. This is not something I know a lot about, but Mama is an expert on these things and she has spends hours and hours studying these things. And so my job now is just to bow out and let you know that this is important. This is the way our forebears took care of medical problems for centuries. And, so, and, and it can do a marvelous job. It can do amazing things. And I'm grateful that she understands this because I think we will use it. I mean, we use it day to day, but we will use it in the future in times of crisis. And that brings me great comfort. So I'm off. I just want to start this off by saying, I'm a mom and I'm a grandma. I'm not a medical professional. I am not a licensed herbalist. I just do this to take care of my family. So you can take this as entertainment value if you want, but this is what I do. Now, if you'd like to go visit some of the professionals that I really enjoy, Dr. Patrick Jones from the Homegrown Herbalist, I think he's fantastic. He has a really funny sense of humor um, that makes it all a little bit more entertaining when you're talking about tough subjects. And then Claudia Orgel from Healthy Preparedness. I'm a huge fan of the way that she really helps you to be able to take these herbs and integrate them into your um, both prophylactic health and taking care of things when, when things go wrong. So I'm either one of those I have a high level of confidence in and I would refer you to any questions that you have to both of those. I'll just leave links in the video, in the description of this video in case you want to pursue that a little bit. But now let's talk about what I do with these herbs. So this is oregano, which everybody knows is a culinary herb. It's also a medicinal herb and can be very healthy. A lot of times what I do is I will just use it fresh. That is my favorite. Um, I just pull the leaves off the stem. You could use the stem, but I like to have it more like this. So I collect them in the morning and I um, wash them. Some people don't wash their herbs. I, I'm just kind of freaky about it. So I do wash them a little bit and dry them. Um, and then, uh, like I said, I'll use them fresh. Right now, Benjamin has a cold sore. Don't tell him I told you. But he's really anti any kind of medication. But one of the things he will do is I have lemon balm growing out there. And I will, um, last night before he went to bed, um, we just made a little poultice and put it on his cold sore with a little band-aid over there to keep it on there because lemon balm is super great for cold sores and for viruses. Um, and then let's talk about the second way that we can use them. Um, a lot of times I'll take them fresh and I'll just put them in an herbal infusion, which is just saying I make a tea. Now you can buy all kinds of teas, right? But um, when I have them handy, I'll make them. So every time we've had a meal, I've made him a lemon balm tea. And what I do is I just take the fresh lemon balm leaves, um, pour hot water over them, and let it steep, right? I'll, I like to put a little bit of raw honey in there, sweeten it up, but it makes it so that he'll drink it, right? And that way we get some of those herbs inside of you. So there's all kinds of different ways to use it, but let's talk about preserving them. So when they're fresh, I can't do much about preserving them, but I have an air dryer that has no, um, it's just racks, right? You can, most herbs will dry really well if you just put them on racks or sometimes I will tie them in bundles and I will hang them um, just so that I can dry them, right? They need lots of air movement and they can dry. And when you do that, those herbs will stay fresh for about a year or two and they'll maintain their medicinal properties. But being the prepper that I am, I want them to last longer than that. So there's a couple other things that I do. These are all freeze dried herbs and I'll talk about that in a minute. But for my dried herbs, I would put them in containers 
just like this. I love the bottles with the mason jar lids because I can reuse them, um, but I use an oxygen absorber. And what that does is it prevents the herbs from oxidizing, which improves the shelf life. I wish I could find something like that for me. What can we do to improve my shelf life, right? Um, but so the oxygen absorber is a really good idea. Do you have to use it? No, you can just put them in a bottle just because the bottle's going to protect them from environmental moisture and so it's a good idea. And then I store these in a cool, dark place because the light will degrade them and the, um, the heat will degrade them. So make sure that you store them correctly. And the dried herbs are great, but they have a shelf life of only a year or two. Now the freeze dried herbs will last significantly longer. I honestly don't know how much longer. When you dried fruits and vegetables are a year or two and freeze dried are up to 25 years. So I would expect something similar from the herbs, but remember it's the medicinal qualities. It's not whether or not they're still edible, it's whether or not those medicinal properties are still really strong. And so personally, I would try and use these up within five years because I think that, that, that you're gonna have the highest level. Now here, this is freeze-dried lemon balm. So when Ben gets his cold sore in the winter time, I have it, right? Right now I've got it fresh, so I run out there, but in the winter time, I've got this. Now let's talk about one of the other things that I do with them that actually makes the shelf life forever, like last forever. One of the things that I forgot to mention that I should is that the, I have all kinds of herbal books, right? That tell you all about medicinal herbs, how to use them, um, how to harvest them, how to identify them. And I think it's really important that you have some really good information. Um, a lot of the books that I have, I have gotten from thrift stores or garage sales because that's the way you collect things on a budget, right? Um, but this is one that I just got for my birthday from my daughter. And quite frankly, nothing says I love you like a good herbalist book. <laughs> Let's talk about tinctures. So all that a tincture is, is you're taking the dried herb and you're pouring alcohol over the top of it. And what the alcohol does is it extracts the medicinal properties. You can't do it with water. It, it just doesn't work. Like you can make um, a tea like what we were talking about, an infusion, and you will get some of those medicinal properties, but you can't make something that's gonna last forever that has, that's really strong with just water. So um, you could use, like there's glycerin, you could do oil infusions. Well, let's talk a little bit about an oil infusion first. Um, so I use oil infusions where I, in fact, click the card in the corner and I'll take you to a video that I created on making salve. Um, and the salves are amazing. But the reason why we use an oil infusion is to make a salve. So what I do is I take the dried herb and I cover it with oil. In my case, I want a little bit of heat. Too much heat will kill the medicinal properties. So I just put it on warm in my crock pot just so that it barely is warm enough because a lot of times I like to use coconut oil, sometimes olive oil, sometimes a mixture, but I need something to make it warm enough that it will work and then I just let it infuse for a while. Um, and then I take that and I turn it into a salve. And that video will show you how I did that. But with, an, with a tincture, you're gonna take your dried herb and you're gonna cover it with alcohol. And this is actually some lemon balm that I did back in 2018. And I, I was preparing for this video and I was a little bit embarrassed because I went down to look at my tinctures and I had a lot of them from 2018, 2019 that hadn't been strained yet. And quite frankly, that's just fine. It doesn't really matter. So what I did is I have all these little bottles, right? And then, okay, the bottles are an investment to start with, but then you can reuse them over and over again. So this is some valerian tincture that I had made from valerian that I grow here. And um, now it's in a bottle ready to use. I have these little droppers that I use to help dispense it, or there's little spray caps that you can get too. But let me tell you something about this valerian. So um, we do not drink. We do not drink alcohol, um, but I am just fine using it for medicinal purposes like this. Um, and everybody has their own thing, right? But I have a um, sweet, someone who I love very much who has a problem with alcohol. And um, this person was staying with us and I, I just don't let people drink alcohol in my home. You can do what you want in yours, but for me and my home, um, we don't do that. And he was just having a really, really hard time. 
and was super stressed. And I said, here, let me just let you try some of this. And I gave him a teaspoon of the valerian tincture. And 20 minutes later, I said, hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And he's like, this is great. It has all the benefits of drinking without any of the side effects. So I'm not sure if that was really good or bad, but um, it's very effective. And so don't discount what herbs can do for you. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we strain this. Like I said, this was from 2018. Quite frankly, with a tincture, you only have to let them sit for about two weeks. Longer isn't going to hurt them. And these are all some that I just did um, a couple weeks ago. And so I'm not quite ready to strain it yet. This one's gumweed and it won't work with vodka because it's gummy and sticky. So I had to use Everclear to cover this. And um, that's really good for um, lung kind of issues. So with this, this is the lemon balm, right? And I am just going to put, this is a paint strainer bag. You can get expensive stuff to do this. And that's great if you want to do that. But I'm just using a paint strainer bag. And all you do is you take it. Can you see how this has been in there a really long time? Now, when I do this, I want to get every last drop out of it because it's valuable, right? And alcohol, quite frankly, is expensive. So I will let this sit for a little while and drain. And then once I think it's drained enough, then I'm going to take this bag and I'm just going to squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it to get all of it out. And then I'm going to package it in these little bottles and I'll label them just to make sure we know what's in it, right? So always make sure that you label them. And that's all there is to making a tincture. Super easy. So now let's make a different one from start to finish. The tincture I want to make with you today is called Herbal Mectin, and I actually bought it in a kit from Dr. Kyle Christensen. Um, herbal Mectin is kind of the herbal counterpart to Ivermectin, and so I thought that is something that I really wanted to have. So in this little kit, they have labels for my little bottles. They have the herbs mixed together in the Mylar bag and a paint strainer. Remember what the paint strainer was for? This kit was $95. Can you see why I like to grow my own herbs? Because it makes it so much more cost effective. However, I wanted to do this with his recipe first so that I could get it right. Um, the recipe calls for one and a third cups of sweet Annie, which is wormwood, one third cup mergum, one third cup sarsaparilla, 1.75 liters of vodka, and then it has the two quart or the strainer in it, right? And here's a two quart jar. Now, this is the recipe on the back. That's another reason why I really wanted this because it has everything that I need. On the back here, it talks about different journal articles showing the positive um, effects of it and why it would work. And so I'm thinking it's a really good thing to have on hand. Now, all we have to do to make this, um, Dr. Christensen, likes to make it in a blender. I don't always use a blender, but you know, that's okay. Um, the smaller the particles, the easier it's going to be to, for, to get all of the medicinal properties out of it. I know that Dr. Jones, when they make their tinctures, they powder, they use powdered herbs for the same purpose. So we're just gonna put the herbs in there and then I'm gonna cover it with the vodka. And I'm going to blend it. All right, you could probably hear some of those pieces in there. We'll dump it in here. Now, can you see how the, that is kind of a weird, really good smell. Um, see how there's still stuff left in here? So we don't want to waste any of it if that's possible. So I'm just going to, there's a lot in the lid. Let's see if I can get it. And we're supposed to use the entire bottle of alcohol. 
So we'll see if I can get some of that goodness out of here by just spinning it again. Oh, much better. Whoops, I've got a lot of bubbles. Okay, what I'll probably do is let the bubble settle and then finish filling that. And then we're gonna put the lid on this and it's gonna set for at least two weeks. It could set for a year or two or as long as you want it to before you strain it. It has to be at least two weeks. But that's one of the reasons why I really like the tincture, even though I don't like um, the alcohol piece of it, but the tincture lets it last forever. It's all ready to go on the shelf. It's so beautiful when you, a geek like me looks at this and just says, oh, that's so good. Um, it needs to set for at least two weeks before I strain it. And every time I walk by it, if it's someplace that I see it, I will give it a little shake during that time. It can sit on the shelf for a month, for a year, for however long until you strain it and that's just fine. Um, when I had COVID, I went out and tried to take a wormwood tea and having never tasted actually wormwood before, I thought I might wanna die instead of um, and drinking that tea. So I didn't drink very much of it. It is really, really bad. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why they have this sarsaparilla here. But in order to get this one down, you might need to put like real maple syrup in it or honey and then double the dosage. And cause you know, a little bit of sugar helps the medicine go down. This is Claudia's mix and match herbal formula kit. And in it for her, she has this tasty booster. And that's what the purpose of this is. It's to make any of this the other ones so that it's palatable enough that you can take it down. But um, when it comes to making formulas, that would be like mixing herbs together for a different creation. This is one, and you can see this is really bad. It should have what's in it, but I made it for the cat because our cat had gotten into some type of trouble, some fight or something and had some large open wounds. and. I needed to make sure that I had something on it that would help it heal, like, and there's comfrey and there's a bunch of stuff in here, and it actually worked. The cat didn't like it at all when we put it on. It kept licking it, um, but it made it so that it healed and it never got infected, which is really good. This one is a bug spray, and it has um, different stuff in it to help the bugs not want to eat you all up. So there's all kind, and this one I think has some essential oils in it too that I put into it. So it's a whole combination of stuff. But those are formulas that um, I kind of experiment a little with, but sometimes I just want formulas that are already made so that I don't have to worry about it. And so these are some that Claudia has done and they're super fantastic. Um, Make sure you always get them from a trusted source. I think Claudia Orgel's Healthy Preparedness is a great source. I think Dr. Jones at um, Homegrown Herbalist, he's a good source to get them. Just be very careful because you can't always trust that what they say is in it is what's in it. And that's, that's a problem. But, and the other piece of it is that some of the ingredients are things I'd never be able to grow in my yard because they're tropical or, or they're just too big of a pain. So that's one of the things that I like to do, have in my storage. And as you can see, these are my two little boxes of my latest tinctures, right? As a prepper, I want to have on hand in my home, whatever I'm going to need, regardless of what happens around me, whether or not my crops fail, whether or not it's winter time. And that's one of the reasons why tinctures are very appealing to me because it has a forever shelf life. One of the other things I wanted to mention, um, a lot of times these bottles of tinctures are 30 or $40. When I make them myself, they end up being significantly less. The vodka is expensive, even if the herbs that I have in there are free. Well, sort of free, that one's kind of complicated, but they grow everywhere in my yard like weeds, and so I consider them free. But the vodka is kind of expensive, but these bottles, they'll run you 30 or $40 in this kit from Claudia. They're only about, well, if you use our discount code, so we have a discount code, make sure that you use it. Um, it'll be in the link, right? It's Provident. And 
it'll make it so that these bottles are about $13 a piece, which is in this kit, which is significantly less expensive. A nice way that you can build your stash if you're still learning. One last thing that I really like to talk about is just grow your own herbs. Don't be afraid of it because it is so easy and then you have ready local access when you need them. Um, this is another book from Claudia Orgel from Healthy Preparedness, Medicinal Seeds and Herbs for Disasters. And in this book, it's just real short, real clear kind of what the herbs are, what you might use them for, and how you're gonna grow them. And it comes with this adorable little herb um, seed kit for the seeds so that you can grow. Now, some of them have to be um, cold stratified, which means they have to be um, put in the refrigerator or freezer for a while so that it makes them think that winter has happened and then they will sprout. So in there, there's all these super cute little seeds that are packaged with um, desiccant, right? Now, I there are some in here I don't have and I am super, super thrilled about it. But one of the things she has in here is comfrey. Comfrey is an incredible, amazing herb that everyone should have. Personally, I would never grow it by seed. And the reason why is because once comfrey is established, you can't get rid of it. Like it's super hard to get rid of it, which is a blessing because then you already, ha you always have it, right? Um, I recommend that you get a sterile variety called Bocking 14. And if you click the card in the corner, it'll take you to a video or a post that I created on that um, because comfrey is seriously amazing. But that plant can only be um, propagated by root division. So the seeds won't have thousands of little baby comfries all over where you don't want them. Um, and it, you can find it, search online, and there are places that will sell you a piece of that root. And I would do that definitely over the seeds. But you know what? The seeds work too. Like the seeds will grow that plant. And if you don't mind it spreading, then that's, that's totally just fine. Sometimes we like our gardens to be a little bit more... Um, Oh, what's a good word for it? Tailored or, um, yeah, less weeds, right? But in here, there's all kinds of things like the calendula and the echinacea. And I, I think this is an adorable little kit. And if you need something to get you started growing medicinal herbs, absolutely. I would totally go for this because it's got all of the right varieties to meet all of your basic needs, especially when something happens. The other thing that I would really recommend is to start looking for herbal books. If you can afford it, go online and purchase the ones that, that look good to you. Claudia's is a great idea. She also has a book called Beyond Wheat and Weeds that's a really good one. Um, I love Dr. Christensen. Kyle Christensen has this herbal first aid and healthcare book that I found very helpful. Um, I know that Dr. Patrick Jones also from Homegrown Herbalist, he has a few that are really good books. Just if you can afford it, go on and get some of those. If you can't, start looking at garage sales or at local thrift stop shops and you'll find something. But having that reference in hand to tell you how to do it is really, really important because who knows what's gonna happen next year, right? Who knows if we're gonna have access to good quality medical care. We wanna make sure that we can take care of our families with what resources we have available to us. Which brings me to the question of the day. What is your favorite medicinal herb and how do you use it? Comment below and thanks for being part of the solution.